yes 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 please okay, thank please. you thank you so much yes, good afternoon one and all team dignitaries at this virtual gathering guest of honor for the valedictory function professor dr ad savant former vice chancellor university of rajasthan principal of our college professor dr s v rathod national delegates teaching fraternity and research scholars from various colleges and universities across the globe on behalf of bhavan sazarimal sumani college of arts and science and jairam das patel college of commerce and management studies i dr manjusha patwardhan iqsc coordinator heartily welcome you all to the valedictory function of this 3 day international conference fundamental and applied sciences scfas 2021 organized by the in collaboration with the internal quality assurance cell iqsc a true evaluation of of any program can be discerned the participants of the program share their views about the same it is time for us to take representative international conference who hail from different strata of academia such as institutions of, of higher education faculty members from various colleges and universities and research scholars across the globe may i now invite to share her feedback over to you madam have you unmuted her मुझे आवाज जरा कट जाता मधे पर कॉल कर डॉक्टर आनंद कृष्णवेणी काइंड वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम इज इट ऑडिबल यस मैम वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल सो माइ सेल्फ डॉक्टर आनंद कृष्णवेणी फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी first of all i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present uh, my research work and also to give a feedback in this conference so in my real sense i uh, it uh, it is a very wonderful fantastic and terrific conference and it is a very good uh, network and uh, moreover this uh, the in the sense that the conference was very affordable to all the uh, scholars as well as scientists and uh, thank you so much for your thoughtful and effective organization and uh, really enjoyed i am uh, it is a perfect uh, size of network and people were very uh, very friendly in nature and uh, from the conference generated it a uh, lot of ideas about how to do my research in various sciences and also to extend my uh, skills for professional qualifications and feel it is a very uh, wonderful one and uh, especially with the plenary talks they have given by the speakers very very uh, stellar it is a very high quality so in one single word we may call it as it is a very excellent one and it is a very well organized conference good scale and solid content in the presentation i thought it was a very great conference and uh, on behalf of my university also i would like to extend my heartfelt uh, congratulations for the team and once again thank you for hosting such a wonderful conference i am always impressed with the commitment and efficiency of who planned this conference thank you one and all thank you so much ma'am for your feedback now i invite miss shilpa ghogre assistant professor department of mathematics from md college mumbai views yeah thank you manjusha madam uh, let me uh, thank the organizing team for giving me the opportunity to present my research work as well as give my feedback over here uh, for me after the entire year of online teaching learning and the conducting of examination attending this conference presenting the paper in it was really an enjoyable interesting and informative experience though most of the sessions were non mathematics they were the research work which was done by the people was very different in different fields 
and how it is applied in the practical life was very very inspiring dr lawrence's uh, speech or the talk on approximations of integral equations was very interesting uh, i should mention that the remarks and suggestions which were given by dr devre after the presentations of the research papers are very very valuable for new researchers like us i really thank from my bottom of my heart to dr devre for uh, sharing that uh, remarks and suggestions the overall organization of the conference was really very good and i understand how many difficulties are faced in organizing the online uh, conferences like this so many technical problems and all those things are there but uh, the communication was very good through the different whatsapp group uh, the only request i would like to make is all the youtube videos of the sessions Uh, if the organizing team can keep them open instead of keeping them as private it would be very very useful because it is a kind of a, you know references for us we can go back and watch those videos and revise some of the points whenever we want to feel like so thank you again uh, thank you all the organizing team and thank you very much ma'am thank you so much for your feedback and we will definitely make these youtube videos open and they will be available on the website of our college and youtube channel of our college uh, after this conference we will work on that surely ma'am thank you so much uh, may I now invite ms vishakha rai from mangalore university karnataka to express her views good afternoon to you all thank you for the opportunity for the uh, vishaka uh, ma'am can you be a little louder please hello hello ma'am yes ma please ma'am audible yes yeah, thank you for thank you ma'am for the giving the opportunity to present my paper as well as for giving the feedback actually it was my pleasure to participate in a international conference of fundamental Uh, fundamental applied science, uh, fundamental and applied science, 2021. So all the sessions were informative and uh, interactive, and they have covered wide range of topics. So the conference was uh, well organized, and the committee was outstanding in keeping the whole uh, event lively. Uh, and the time management was really very good. Uh, once again, I would like to congratulate you on your beautiful success of ICFAS 2021, and a lot more to come. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vishakha, ma'am. Uh, moving ahead, may I now request Dr. Shantosh Deshbhatar, head of the Department of Zoology, to introduce our guest of honor for the day, Professor Dr. A. D. Savan. Over to you, Shantosh sir. Thank you, madam. a very good afternoon to all members participants teachers faculty members research scholars and dear students i dr shanta jamdesh pratar head of zoology department indeed feel deeply privileged and elated to introduce to you an eminent versatile personality dr ad savan sir who is an able administrator avid researcher extremely popular teacher and an internationally acclaimed scientist in the field of inorganic analytical chemistry and environmental science i am profoundly honored to inform that dr ad savan sir is my teacher from the institute of science mumbai where sir has rendered invaluable teaching sermons to students researchers and colleagues for a majority of his career time span his academic administrative proficiency and acumen say propelled the government to appoint him as joint director higher education mumbai region and subsequently as the pro vice chancellor mumbai university and vice chancellor university of rajasthan during his tenures he brought about several academic and administrative reforms in higher education notably the ones pertinent to private university act law university act amendments to maharashtra university act with provisions for professional courses fee regulation and admission process dr savan sir has 
over 150 publications in uh, national and international journals of repute with a very high impact factor. He has also authored an article in Encyclopedia of Analytical Science published by Cambridge University. He has executed several research products, projects, notably the one which I am referring is IAEA, that's International Atomic Energy Agency, Vienna. His path-breaking research in environmental studies, projecting the dreaded lead poisoning cases in Maharashtra, Dadara, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, as well as exposure of traffic personals to leaded petrol paved the way for a national policy on introduction of unleaded petrol in India. Savant sir is a recipient of several awards, and especially I would like to mention that is in recognition for his crusade against environmental pollution. And he has even uh, been a member or maybe you know, who has been handling several matters or litigations of industrial pollution. His selfless service, services to society, science and technology have aptly showered him with prestigious position in the social realms, like presently being the, the president of So Clean, that is Society for Clean Environment, president, Mumbai Rose Society, vice president of National Society of Friends of Trees. Currently, he's also the director Waste to Energy Research and Technology Council India, a Columbia University venture of global WTERT, that is the same as the Waste to Energy Research and Technology Council, which pioneers in establishing the technologies for converting waste into energy. Finally, with this brief outline, I request Dr. Savan, sir, to kindly address this August gathering. Uh, welcome, sir, and please address the crowd. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Santaj. Nice to see you again here. Uh, my esteemed friend, Principal Dr. Rathod, uh, Madam Manjusha, all organizing team, payload delegates, uh, resource persons. I'm told Dr. Salonki also was there. And Dr. Prabhu was there, so a conglomeration of a good teachers, first of all. A teacher comes scientist, and uh, the blend of science, research, and teaching together makes uh, the higher education beginning for the young generation. All these three fundamental aspects of higher education uh, agglomerated today in this conference. Uh, excellent feedback from the resource persons that I just heard. Uh, and I was wondering and asking so many areas you have uh, put into the conference. Uh, I would look it at uh, boils down to, uh, for me it boils down to the fundamental science. Uh, of uh, natural sciences and uh, engineering technology. Now, that takes me to the question of mind boggling. He, now, what is happening to the globe? And we say the pandemic. And uh, with so much development, advancement all over uh, the world, advanced countries and uh, many of you have visited the phenomenal establishments doing so much advancement of science and you are exploring all that research that you have done with the matters and molecules and then we were very complacent that the world is uh, heading for superpower, super progress uh, the man as the conqueror, but then suddenly, uh, March 1920, we were told that 
shut your all activities there is something bothering and you can't see you can't manage and now it is it is the kind of uh, a disease that you cannot control and we started looking down again to the most fundamental particle like you know so though we had gone down to most fundamental particles say like uh, neutron discovery in 1932 and friends what it all gave us all that energy that we harness nuclear energy world's probably the highest one of the second largest source of a power from a very small atom just because that became possible why i'm telling you this because no matter how big science of multiplication you do your theme says fundamental science and had otto horn and strassman not discovered the neutron probably the fission would not have happened and without a fission there would not have been tremendous nuclear energy that you are getting and not only that more than that we are getting artificial radioactivity anything that is existing non radioactive naturally occurring are every few elements which are radioactive but rest imagine today nmri would not have been existing with all kind of diagnosis investigations you could not have done anything with the, without nuclear medicines you could not have been able to measure the advancement of so many diseases you could not have been treated them online in situ radiations to control the disease and cure the people all that boils down to friends had otto han not thought of there a fundamental tiny particle neutron all this would not have happened let's come to the biological sciences dna deciphration is not a very old story 1952 not very very old and after dna was deciphration was done the whole genomics has been open to the world and by technology in the advancement and the synthesis and the new drugs and applications everything you can imagine today without that the by technology it was not there probably much of the advancement of science and the comfort of life would not have been there again i come down to somebody rightly thought that the dna is the fundamental research deciphrations so we we look into all this again we go back to the fundamental properties now for example this uh, corona which is nothing but the protein layer like you know and uh, without understanding what it is they did just be broken by simple molecule the dipole of the molecule of soap and water has been not worked upon probably would not have been able to suddenly see that you can break this protein and corona can be can be destroyed again the fundamental science so these are the issues now recently we had uh, 28 february uh, national science day and uh, all these days are marked particularly for uh, remembering this breakthrough journey of science you know there are plenty billions einstein to galileo and all those but i am coming to the most fundamental aspect which are currently uh, very much required for that and uh, sir cv raman just scattering of light and if the light property was not known not disclosed by him just out of his curiosity getting taking monocrotized light and then making it to fall on the glass and then scattering and seeing a variety of composition of color <laughs> now <clears throat> i hope students will be able to understand what does it mean this light scattering was not there will be no reflection no refractions no prisms no optical fiber no light passing through so many imaging image photographs and digitals and all those things you know so all this is a magic of sri raman's work 
So again, coming to fundamental research, my point is that we have to tune our teaching methodologies, make students understand what they have been studying. They have really been having inquisitiveness for that, which is totally forgotten. At least I learned from my professor and then made fundamental change in my own thinking. And had it not been done, what was there? I was doing simple inorganic chemistry. Do your research, publish paper, get the degree. I was not very happy and excited about uh, structural studies of the compounds, polarites, shellites, and find out what symmetries and lattice parameters and all that. That didn't interest me. So I told my professor, I want to do something very exciting. He said, you shift over to the nuclear science, neutron activation analysis, because my fellow colleagues were working on those areas and very exciting after Chernobyl accident, uh, we could find deposits uh, from Chernobyl to that of terrace of the Institute of Science with the rainfall. And that was, that changed my thinking. I said, sir, what is happening? Oh, you don't know these clouds. Now we're doing Zoom cloud meetings. So these clouds from the burst of Chernobyl accident, where a reactor had got divergent, couldn't be controlled the fission and so it burst. So radioactivity fell on entire Europe in addition to the Asia. And then you know that uh, European had stopped eating uh, the milk, milk product and uh, grazing lambs and all those because uh, the falling of the small traces of radioactivity in the environment deposits, you know, they go into the food chain. I was say, what is wrong? The radioactivity multiplied, magnified through food chain to the milk, to the cow dung. It can spread to the whole globe. And so those countries were then trying to export the material to, to other countries because they didn't want to eat. And people would not know that it contains efficient fragments like cesium-137, which has got 30 years half-life. And uh, 30 years means it remains six half-lives very active. And so it enters the body. It can kill the person slowly and still it remains radioactive. So such is the deadly property of a fundamental particle, which is a radioactive. So I said, what, sir? So don't you see the Mumbai environment, Mumbai coast is highly polluted. The Institute of Science is a pioneering research has done been done, not by any other advanced institutions around you. That time when we were doing all this, they were, we were slightly laughed over it, you know. Now today the whole world, all of you, most of you are talking of toxic metal, toxic trace metal, heavy metal, Nobody was talking when we talked of mercury in Thane Creek, mercury 203 isotope, which is coming from Balkrishna paper mill, contaminated environment of the khadi of the Thane. And we could find that the fish was highly contaminated. Why? Why it was surprised to all of these people? They say, what is happening? How it can happen? But then people forgot. There was a Minamata disease. How do we ignore what is happening worldwide? So Minamata disease was nothing but a factory which was using a chemical acetaldehyde and for production of that, they were using uh, the mercury as a catalyst. And in those days, 1932, 30, uh, yes, they were not knowing that it is a toxic metal. Mercury toxic came to light in only 1956-58 confirmed. How many of us know? We're all talking, teaching and all that. Going back to the fundamentals of that, this mercury became organic mercury, methyl mercury, ethyl mercury. All these chemicals, compounds, laboratories, synthesis, preparations, medicines, everything we do. We are not ready to go back to the fundamentals of these issues, you know. And so we found that mercury in a fish. And so there's a uproar all over. And then the factories were asked to shut down. 
and not to discharge this mercury. So while doing this thing, we started monitoring the uh, water quality of the coastal sites, the seafood, and number of students, interdisciplinary work, Shantaj also was there. And we started finding out toxic metals in the Mumbai environment. Friends, these are very, very important fundamental issues. Unless we all say sustainable environment, it's a very simple word, coined beautifully, but forgotten by everybody. How do you get sustainable environment? The way you're doing production like this, 17 million vehicles are flowing in Mumbai, such a small tiny island, 11 million, million vehicles in Delhi, giving you tremendous amount of NOx into the atmosphere. NOx is pulmonary bothering problem, COPD, and it is one of the major issues why we are going corona pandemic so high in you know, dense cities where high uh, consumption of the energy and emissions are there. So those cities are suffering the most. So we have not left the cities sustainable. In addition, we get treated water, which is up, not up to the mark. We breathe the air, which is full of pollutants. We breathe the air instead of 326 ppm of uh, SPM, suspended particulate gas cross over 400. You clean your house tabletop every day, otherwise you'll fall sick. Where did dust is coming from? So we have total disrespect. We have total disrespect for the fundamental science. So therefore, my issue is that coming going, going back to our own profession, doing research for what? While doing that, are you convincing, impressing the minds of a student? Why are learning this science? And there is no purpose of having that syllabus unless those who have planned, they have designed, want your progression to achieve that. So understanding atoms and molecules, reciferations of their properties, and if they are harmful, how to curb them? If it's a very active, how to neutralize that, you can do chelation of it, you know. Now, this understanding, if it is not given to the student while teaching them, the education remains into the book. And now also that also become a problem. Therefore, please emphasize on while teaching the fundamental science. A simple thing, you know, uh, if you talk of a chemistry, we are giving titration to the students, you know. And you say, oh, estimate copper, huh? aerochrome black tea indicator. And you add uh, EDTA. And aerochrome black tea indicator will become wine red to blue. Titration is over. And you do the calculation. How many are first telling students uh, fundamentally? So why do we get a wine red color when you add aerochrome black to indicator? I ask these questions to students when it's to come for MSc examination. Nobody knows. Why do you add indicator? So wine red color of what? No. No answer to that. Why do you add EDTA? So what happens? What happens to metal indicator complex? Does it come to ship to metal ETTA complex? And if it is not, why the color is changing? So when you say, when the total shift over is taken, plans metal indicator complex to metal ETTA complex indicator is set free, the buffer of pH 10, it has got a wine red color. Wine red to blue color. And so titration is over. So that is the point of neutrality wherein entire copper atom concentration in a solution is assessed in terms of a given strength of a EDTA. So with the 
formula, you calculate one ml of so and so molar of the DTT corresponds to how much of the copper. So your solution contains how much copper. Friends, I have found this uh, very much lagging in the students who all came for university examinations from different colleges. And therefore, I always salute my professor, late Professor Haldar, who always told us to look into, have inquisitive mind, ask reason. The motto of Institute of Science is to seek the causes of the things. And then must be knowing about it, the logo of Institute of Science, to seek the causes of the such a simple thing. Why does this happen? If you don't ask question, why it happens? And if there's no answer, you shall search the answer for, you know. So friends, so many fundamental research have been culminated into the actual utility, you know. Now, he just mentioned about unleaded petrol. I don't want all the time credit because government officials, babus, they will not give credit to all our scientists, engineers. They will say automobiles are produced, but they forget that automobile engineers starts, are taught into the university. Samsung, LG, all the products coming from Korea, advanced products are coming from the university research. All the medicines, pharma, are coming from university research. But when you accolade of the institutions, and industries like LNTs and these and that and uh, big, big establishments. Then the CSR scientists will claim their tall claims, CSR laboratories. But they will not say all these scientists working in those big establishments, right from the CRM Institute, they are products of the university. But had you spent more time, given them more freedom, more infrastructure, more good number of teachers, and taught them well, probably India would have 10 times more Nobel Prizes than any European country. But nothing has been provided to us. That kind of infrastructure, the facilitations for a fundamental research, every advanced laboratory or department laboratories of every university in the US and America, there shall be at least two, three NMR, not one. Show me one laboratory in the New York where there is only one single NMR. Now I am talking not university. I am talking departments. Departments have hundreds of buildings. Now Britishers have established so much legacy of research establishments, institutions like Institute of Science also. But look at the fate of it, you know. Our entire University of Mumbai does not have one working NMR. What are we talking about? Whom you are impressing upon? What this science policy is being designed? What the stalwarts we have learned and accolades got the big names? They want to be on this committee, that committee. But then telling outright to the government, Stop the nonsense and equip the institutions and the laboratories and the universities. At least you don't interfere. Let them progress. Give them the teacher. There is a teacher in the classroom who can tell the fundamentals of higher education. Then comes the subject, you know. So this is a very pathetic story. Had these people not done, tuned down to this fundamental research, Today's advancements would not have been possible. Today, there is a dearth of the clean drinking water. No quality of air, air quality index has gone down like very bad. In the pandemic, it had gone improved to the 40 years we have been trying. By this year, levels should be down to. They are brought in six months by pandemic. Level which we thought will be brought to 2040. These levels of NOx of SO2, we achieved those because factories were closed and environment was better. There was a better life on the surface. 
except for the corona that was bothering the individuals. So look at the, how serious this issue is. So our institutions are temples. Students dealing with the glassware, furniture class, burette, prepaid, the balance, struggling to make a solution, guide him properly. A point not one molar solution need not be point not one. It could be point not one one or not one five. What you need exact weight that you have dissolved and what is the molarity or normality. Students struggle to get exact point one normal, sir. Point one molar. I just thought sky, sky will fall on and spend half an hour in laboratory balance room for weighing that. Because he doesn't know fundamental science. What you need, how much is dissolved, approximate exact weight around that you desire, and calculate exact normality or molarity and work on that. You know. So these are the issues. Uh, and when you learn this, that was totally transformed my mindset. And then I plunged into problem being faced by the people. Hundreds of cattle head had perished, Tadra Nagar heavily. Nobody bothered, all babus, they collected samples, nothing, they ate money, corruption, pollution control boards, and people were dying. Not people actually, they were suffering, but cattle had perished because they had eaten a lot of lead from the grazing land coming out of the waste batteries churning out of the factory in the Stanaulai Manufacturing Company and they grazing on their grass and heavy toxicity of late cattle head had perished over 400. People were suffering like anything. So it is the knowledge of a science that yes, late is a toxic, absolutely unessential element. When we count the blood lead of human body and animal, it was more than 400 per microgram per deciliter. And even a 5 ppm, 5 microgram per deciliter sets the problem to the body. And so it becomes a lethal beyond 35, 40, 100 over a long time. And so it also becomes a carcinogen. The whole world had got unleaded petrol, but not we. Singapore also had got unleaded. So when we took up the mission that how much lead is spreading into the environment through petrol that you are using, anti-knocking agent, 54 milligram per liter of the petrol used lead, that all comes into tetraethyl, tetramethyl lead into the environment and bothering all of us. India thought of going very seriously, unleaded petrol. It ultimately worked out. And so at least we are saved from toxic lead fumes coming into the environment, making our life better, at least free from lead toxicity. There are many other metal toxicities, but at least we sign the metal toxicity of it. So friend, this is the same person whose duty was to teach students, practicals, take the lectures, conduct examination. Nowhere it was written, you plunge into the fields, go to factory site, your government servant, you cannot indulge into these activities. You cannot have scuffle with the people on the field. And then you uh, have to uh, manage your own business, take your salary. But no, I, I jumped into the fields and uh, I said nothing doing. Like that, there are many pollution episodes happened around Mumbai. I was hard press not to talk about it, but I did speak. I even saved the two trees on Cattle Road. They are standing middle of the road in Mumbai by taking my environment science student and the trees are safe. No accidents are taking place because most of the traffic is going now through the ceiling. And in dull hours, there are no even vehicle traffic on the Cattle Road. So saving those trees was very important. They are 100 year plus old trees. So sustainable environment, everybody has to work on. 
protect the environment, have a balance, strike the balance, produce maximum from minimum. And just because you can catalyze and produce a lot exponentially and dump it in this world and damage the environment of the country, I don't think we should do that. That's why the word sustainable environment is most important. Even even laboratories also minimize the wastage of anything that you know. If you if you can save electricity consumption of a bulb for two hours or three hours a day, there you are saving at least 10 kg of the coal, which gives a four kg of a flash 40%. And that becomes the environmental waste material. And that is another issue, waste management across the world. Again, India is very, very poor, making our life most miserable, looking at Gorai or that of the Devna dumping ground and see the plight of the people living around, you know. And we talk of uh, diagen and carcinogenic material and biomedical waste. So all these uh, common men will not understand. Uh, the administration will not understand. It is a fundamental science which can understand, impress upon the students what is good and bad and bring into the practice to the society. I'm sure this uh, conference uh, opened up the visitors of uh, fundamental science in different areas that we have heard. Maybe it is a organic, inorganic, physical, analytical, physics, what it is, you know. But uh, the bottom line is that uh, the fundamental science. So I congratulate the organizers for organizing such a conference which talks of the thrust area is of the fundamental science, you know. So with these few examples, you must have learned. We still want to have a good technology system, you know, and people don't die in accidents. Uh, 1.4 million people are lost life globally on road accidents, you know. Uh, we have the IT kind of the material technology so we can sense the vehicle uh, much before that it is on the road and you don't hit upon it, you know. We require this kind of technologies, fundamental science, so that we can save the life. I can go on and go on. So many issues, uh, they bother us and that's why we try to talk and tell the young generation, students and teachers that keep uh, thrust on the fundamental science. With this, uh, I must thank the organizer, the college management principles organizer for inviting me. I'm sorry I couldn't share the screen because suddenly I was awakened up because the invitation of one month old, I had lost the track. So I canceled the other engagement now just to honor uh, this international conference and to be with you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for sharing your valuable insights. As you rightly said, research plays a very crucial role in pro progress of any discipline. And quality research has become the need of an hour for the conservation and preservation of environment and in turn for well-being of humanity. Your expert comments on the role of fundamental sciences issues and concerns in scientific research in contemporary times and way forward through sustainability were truly enlightening. I once again thank you from the bottom of my heart for being with us today. May I now request our principal, Professor Dr. S. V. Rathod, to give the concluding remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manjusha Patwardhan. Good afternoon, one and all. A respected guest of honor for the validity function, Professor Dr. Edi Savan, sir, esteemed dignitaries, delegates from India and abroad, teaching fraternity, and research scholars from various colleges and universities across the globe, and my dear colleagues and students. I am happy to share with you all that we have received close to 800 registrations. Majority of participants were from India and we also had delegates from Japan, 
इंडोनेशिया नेपाल पाकिस्तान इज़राइल सऊदी अरेबिया ओमान इजिप्ट नाइजीरिया कैनेडा एंड यूएसए एट द प्लेनरी सेशन वी हैड एमिनेंट स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम देयर रिस्पेक्टिव फील्ड्स व्हिच इंक्लूड्स एट इंटरनेशनल स्पीकर्स एंड थ्री स्पीकर्स फ्रॉम इंडिया वी रिसीव्ड टोटल 100 87 abstracts for paper presentations and poster presentations and exhibition out of these 46 abstracts from chemical science 36 abstracts from material science and 105 abstracts from life science we have come to the an end of this 3 day international conference on fundamental and applied sciences which surely was a very enriching learning experiences for all of us i have feeling to great satisfaction that the hard work and the tireless efforts of my young colleagues have resulted in successful completions of this conference as said by our patron trustee of bhartiya vidya bhavan and chair persons of the governing body of our college sri mukul ji sonawala this conference is one more feather in the cap of our institution however every end is a new beginning and i am sure that our college will continue to make its mark in the field of higher education with more such academic activities and program i congratulate my team and wish all of you all the very best in all your future endeavors thank you thank you very much over to you manjusha madam thank you sir for your inspirational words and now we come to the much awaited announcement that is the result of the paper and poster presentation in session 1 a chemical sciences the first prize for paper presentation goes to mr suraj mahadik the second prize for paper presentation is awarded to miss vishakha rai in poster presentation the first prize goes to miss lavanya t and in the category of poster exhibition first prize goes to hiba al rajobi nageswara rao lakkim setty g kavita and karunya sakhile for their poster titled kinetic studies and removal of copper and zinc from waste water using chitosan second prize goes to a poster titled synthesis of chromin shift bases using citrus fruit juices as bio catalyst by miss shweta dandekar omkar lotlikar ajit ingle kailash shinde and sb rathod third prize goes to mansi panchal and kayur bhat for their poster titled detection of explosives and their applications in session 1b on material sciences The first prize for paper presentation is awarded to Miss Shilpa Ghogre from MD College Mumbai for her paper titled Some Covered Graphs. Second prize for paper presentation goes to Pratishtha Kushwaha from University of Allahabad for her paper titled Influence of Annealing Temperature on Microstructural and Magnetic Properties of Ferric Oxide. nano particles synthesized via sol gel method in the category of poster presentation the first prize goes to sandhya bharambe from guru nanak college of arts science and commerce for her poster titled physical and magnetic properties of nano ferrites in the category of poster exhibition the first prize is awarded to mrs veena shinde devre from bhavan sazarimal somani college mumbai for her poster titled mean cordial labelings of corona graph the second prize goes to mr sandeep yadav 
from University of Allahabad for his poster titled Vacancy Induced Magnetism in Two Dimensional GAN Monolayer. The first place for presentation is awarded to Nagamani, paper titled Antioxidant. Second prize for paper presentation is awarded to for his paper Barnyard Millet Cultivation in Sardic Soil. In the category of poster presentation, first prize goes to Ms. Minal Trivedi for her paper Fungal Pigment Extraction. In the category of exhibition, the first prize is awarded to Rani Bhagat for essential oils for paste management. Second prize goes to Rani Devi for zero waste goals spent mushroom waste. And the third prize is awarded to Mr. Jagannath Gadpaile for taxonomic investigation on Lindernia. In session 2B on life sciences zoology, the first prize for paper presentation goes to Ms. Dipali Mai. Second prize for paper presentation is shared by two participants, Mr. Bhupender Singh and Dr. Sushant Mane. In the category of poster presentation, first prize is shared again by two participants and is awarded to Ms. Soni Ghumnani and Ms. Nangare Pushpa. In the category of poster exhibition, the first prize goes to Mr. Bijoy Pegu, Apex Professional University, Arunachal Pradesh. Second prize is awarded to Mr. Padmapani Jagtak, Department of Zoology, Savitribai Phule, Pune University. Third prize goes to Dr. Kavita Apkaje, Department of Zoology, Dada Ramchandra Bhakru, Sindhu Mahavidyalaya, Nagpur. Heartiest congratulations to all the winners. We will put up the list of prize winners on the Telegram and WhatsApp group. And coming to the end of this uh, three-day international conference, may I now request Dr. Sandeep Mind, convener of the conference, to propose a vote of thanks. Over to you, Sandeep, sir. Thank you, Dr. Manjusha Patwardhan. Good evening, one and all. It is indeed my honor to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Bhavan Hazarimal College of Arts and Science and Jairam Das Patel College of Commerce and Management Studies, I, Dr. Sandeep Mayin, extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have made this international conference on Fundamental and Applied Sciences, ICFAS 2021, organized by the Faculty of Science and IQSC, a remarkable event. At the outset, my sincere gratitude to the management of our college for their support in organizing this international conference and Sri Mukulji Sonawala, trustee of Bharti Vidya Bhavan and chairman of governing body Bhavan's Hazarimal Somani College. I also thank our principal, Professor Dr. S. V. Rathod, who envisioned this international conference so as to reach numerous participants across the globe. The entire faculty of science and the IQC team is grateful to our principal for his unwavering support in this meaningful international conference. I am very grateful to the keynote speaker, Professor Dr. A.B. Pandit, for an inspirational keynote address. I sincerely thank all the resource person for the plenary sessions, namely Dr. Vilas Pol from USA, Dr. Pankaj Koyinkar from Japan, Dr. J. Tendra Gaikwar from Germany, Dr. Suraj Unyapan from Canada, Dr. Vivek Paul Shettiwar from Mumbai, India, Professor Dr. Shobha Bhargava from Pune, India, Dr. D.B. Prabhu from Mumbai, India, Dr. Edward Narayan from Australia, Dr. Nishikan Vase from USA, Dr. Sanket Doshi from Oman, and Dr. Lawrence Gramont from France for agreeing to be a part of this conference and for delivering very comprehensive and lucid presentations. I'm grateful to all the eminent academicians, namely Professor Dr. M. M. U. Ramanna, Dr. Ramesh Amgar, Dr. Rajendra Devre, Dr. B. G. Vag from Nashik, Dr. Smita Jadav, Dr. Mithin Labane, Dr. P. A. John from Rajasthan, and Dr. Dolly Kumar from Gujarat, who chair the poster and oral presentation sessions, 
and with their expertise provided guidance and knowledge to the participants i sincerely thank professor dr ad savan sir guest of honor at the valedictory session for his gracious presence i thank all the national and international advisory committee member for their valuable advice i thank mr sapneel shewade co convener dr suraj gajbi organizing secretary ms ambika sharma joint organ secretary mr ashok ingre chair treasurer for their hard work in smooth conduct of international conference and thankful to member of organizing committee namely dr urmila maru dr shantanu dridhispatar mr nitin de sardesai dr bhike hile mrs vina shinde devre mr deepak navle dr b d ambore and dr utkarsha chauhan i am thankful to dr manjusha patwardhan iqsc coordinator and her team members namely dr varsha malla ms reena patel and dr rupa deshmukhya for their sustained support my special thanks are due to our librarian for ms bindu pradipan for the technical support for enabling facilitation of this conference very smoothly i thank all the national international delegates and research scholar from various colleges and universities across the globe for their active participation and all those who were directly or indirectly involved in successful organization of this international conference we are truly overwhelmed with the positive feedback and look forward to a fruitful association with all in future as well thank you once again thank you all thanks uh, over to you dr manjusha patwardhan madam thank you dr mind with this we have come to an end of the three day international conference just a small announcement for the participants the feedback link will be shared shortly in the chat of this conference as well as it will be put up on the telegram group and on the whatsapp group may i now request everyone to rise for the national anthem <laughs> 